Hey everyone, in this video we're going to have a go at making a Bollywood dancer cake. I made this one for a Bollywood ball, it was a charity event not long ago. Now for mine I don't need a lot of cake so I'm going to use a bit of polystyrene as well. You can use all cake on yours if you like so. I've started with my big baseboard and I've drilled a hole in that's the same thickness as my cake doll. I've got a 6 inch polystyrene dummy and also a 6 inch cake drum and I've drilled through both of those and I've gone slightly off centre because I want a skirt to be bigger at one side than the other. And like I say, you don't have to use polystyrene. I just didn't need a huge amount of cake in this one. I've added a slightly smaller cake drum just to the bottom again with the same hole drilled through. And I want my skirt to have a bit of a slant at the back. So can you see between the two drums, I'm just going to slice a little bit of polystyrene off. Now do be careful that you don't get polystyrene everywhere. At the moment, I've not got any edible bits out so that I'm not going to get the polystyrene on anything that's going to be eaten. I've got a slightly bigger base drum now. I think this one was about 14 inches that I've used here. And I'm going to place my other board on here. Okay, so you don't have to have another large base board, but I want mine to look a bit bigger, so I'm adding a second tier of cake drums underneath. But I'm going to ice the large one first, so I'm not going to stick them together yet. So I've covered this in a thin layer of fondant. Now I've just used my Renshaw's lilac one on here. And I'm just going to deepen the colour a little bit by adding a bit of an edible dust. And I've got a luster dust here. And we're going to go on with mixing some different shades. Have a play around, see what you think looks nice. I'm just trying to use a variety of purples, blues and reds. You won't see all the middle bit because my other cake drum is going to cover that. So when I put that on there, you'll see you only see the edges like that. So it's mainly the purple that's showing. So I've just marked a circle slightly smaller than my board. Just because I know that I don't really need any stenciling in this circle because it's only going to be the edge bits that's going to be seen. So I'm going to use the middle bit as a practice area for my first bit of stenciling. And I've got this stencil here, which I got from Evil Cake Genius. Now I'll put links to everything that I use in the description box below the video. I'm going to have a bit of a practice, see what it's like if I put some rainbow dust glitter on. Now this one isn't edible, so I'm just going to make sure it only goes on the board. And now I'm happy with what that looks like with the pink. We're going to stencil it around that edge that we've marked out. And I'm using royal icing here. I've bought it ready made, but you can make your own. I'm going to add some pink glitter. I should have been a little bit more sparing with it than I have been. And then I've also got a little bit of gold. that I've just mixed with a little bit of alcohol. And I'm just going to paint just little touches of it over the board. Just to give it a little bit more detail, a bit more colour. Now you can get different golds. This one that I'm using here is a non-toxic but it isn't edible. But that's okay because we're only putting it on the board and nobody's going to eat the cake board. When I use gold on the cake itself, I'm going to change to an edible gold. So that's just a small part of the first board. I'm going to wait while that's dried and I'm going to continue doing that around the rest of the board. While that's drying, I'm going to move on to my next board up and I'm icing it in the same lilac Renshaw's fondant. I've also poked the little hole through using my dowel so that I can see where that's going to go. And again, we're going to repeat the process where we dust some different colours on there. I'm going to go slightly further in when I'm stenciling this one, but we're just going to do it in the same way as we did on the bottom one. So on this one, I'm just putting my royal icing all over. And instead of using my glitter, I'm going to try using a bit of gold. So I'm going to try putting it on first. So I'm just having a bit of a practice really when I'm doing this. Let's see what it comes out like. I know quite a few of you ask how many times I do a video before filming it. And as you can see, by this not quite working out as planned. I do usually do it as I'm filming it. I don't usually do any more takes. And sometimes it is just experimenting. And I'm not gonna worry about that bit in the middle where it's not too neat because actually the dress itself is gonna cover that area. So if you've got any little mistakes like I have, don't panic too much. You'll probably find that most of them won't be seen. Then using a bit more royal icing, we're gonna stick it on the first board. Just give them a little bit of time to set before you stick these together, otherwise you'll smudge your royal icing. And you can see I've got pink glitter everywhere. I'm going to push one board onto the other. Try and get it as central as you can. So I haven't done the stenciling. Can you see that bit at the back of the board as I was planning on covering it at the end? Although you'll see that at the end I forget. So just to add height, I'm adding some boards and my polystyrene bit that I showed you at the beginning. So remember this is the bit where if you want it all to be edible, you can just use all cake or you can replace it with Rice Krispie Treats. Line up all the holes and all the boards and polystyrene so that our cake dowel will run right through them all. And for this one, I'm going to glue gun all these together with a hot glue gun. Just check that dowel fits in there. So you can see here, I've added the glue with my glue gun and I've put a little bit of glue, can you see around the dowel there? 
I don't want that to come into contact with any cake so I've just cut another hole in a thinner board that's going to go over the top of that and it's just going to stop it coming into contact with my cake. So I'm adding buttercream on here and I've got some sponges here ready to put on. Now I've gone for a toffee on this one. My first cakes are six inches, the same size as the cake board below. And then my next one is a five inch one. So we're getting slightly smaller as we're coming up. And just thread those carefully onto your cake dowel. So then my next one, I've gone smaller again. I've started going onto my four inch ones. And don't forget to buttercream in between each layer. And I've also added a little bit of sugar syrup on to stop the cake drying out. You can see the odd bit dripping down the side. Now I have had these in the freezer for about 15 minutes so you'll see some of them have hardened just a little bit but I don't want them to crumble too much when I cut and we're going to start shaping it a little bit I'm just going to add some cling film around the board so that the cake crumbs don't stick to my decorated board and now we're going to start cutting in a bit of a shape to start with it looks a little bit like a bell a bell kind of shape I've left it slightly bigger at the back than at the front and then what I'm going to do is add some white chocolate ganache all the way around. You can use buttercream if you like, but it's much sturdier if we use ganache on this one. Smooth it out as much as you can. And I've got another dowel that I'm just pushing in the centre of that plastic one. So the plastic one's hollow, and I've pushed a big wooden one all the way through. Make sure there's plenty stuck out above the top. And I'm just filling in the gap with extra fondant. And now I've got some black fondant I'm just placing around the bottom, just in case any of this shows under the skirt we're just going to put a layer of that around there now I've got this ready dyed and then I've also dyed some fuchsia pink with a little bit of orange added to it now we're just concentrating on the polystyrene bit first and we don't want to mix this onto the actual cake above I'm kind of concertina in it a little bit as we go along and there will be another layer going over the top of this now you can add a little bit of tylose powder if you want to firm it up so you can stick the creases up or you can add a little bit of the lapid modeling paste into it which should keep it in shape a little bit and now I've got another piece of my pink and I'm just going to put it on on in sections layer it on so it just drops over that one that you've added and then we're going to start putting some crease lines in so that the skirt looks like it's got a little bit of movement so I'm going to go from the front I'm going to bring them slightly round curved again just spend a bit of time playing with your pleats at the bottom if they don't want to stay in place just push a cocktail stick underneath push it in place and then once it's hardened over a few hours we can remove those again if needs be you can leave them overnight so we're going to keep going now with more pieces of fondant we'll start the other side i'm just going to neaten off that edge just trimming it down a little bit trimming around the top again concentrate on your pleats at the bottom just sort of fold them up with your fingers and then I've got one more piece that's going to go in the center there. Again, trim it at the top. We don't, too much, we don't want too much extra around there. I'm just trimming off the edges to neaten the edges again a little bit. Took any of the scruffy bits behind. Again, play around, put new pleats in the bottom. I pulled that bottom bit over to one side again so it looks like it's moving in the same direction as those creases that we pushed in earlier. And then once you've done this, we're going to pipe on a little bit of patterning. So again, I've got some royal icing. I'm just using the same stuff I was using earlier and I bought it ready made and I've just put a small round nozzle on. So I'm literally just creating some really simple shapes because royal icing isn't a strong point of mine. I'm going to do teardrop shapes on my first layer all the way around the bottom, then some dots, then more teardrop shapes and more dots, but make up the pattern however you want it to go. And then once it's had a couple of hours to dry, I'm going to paint over with one of these rainbow dusts gold but this is an edible one that I'm using with it now being on the actual cake itself once you've gone all the way around with gold we're going to add a little bit of shading into the creases now on our dress I've got a claret colored one here just use a dry brush don't put too much on your brush just a little bit at a time and rub that into the creases just to deepen them or give them a little bit of a deeper color now for the body itself I'm going to use this lapid it's going to set up quite quick and I'm not going to have to wait for it to dry. I would normally use modeling paste, but I'm working to quite a tight time frame with this one. So I don't have time for my modeling paste to dry, unfortunately. So I've dyed a flesh color. This one has got quite a lot of chestnut in the color. And then we're going to start by shaping our body. We're going to put in a neck, working on those shoulders, tummy 
and chest kind of shape. Pull it in nice and tight at the waist. And it's just going to be a little bit wider as it comes out to where our hips are going to go. I'm going to push in a bust with the paintbrush. Just rounding and smoothing everything off there with your fingers. I'm going to add a little collar line, collarbone on either side. Just again using the paintbrush handle for this. Again, gently rubbing through with your fingers to soften the lines a little bit. Now to put her on the cake dowel, I'm having to slice her open at the back and just prise it apart a little bit. Now it will misshape her a little bit, but when we stick her back on in place, we'll cover that back up. Now I've just got a little bit more fondant that I'm just adding to the top of there because I want a little bit more height before it goes onto my skirt. And I'm pushing that cut around the wooden dowel that we've got on there. And then I'm just going to try and push it together, giving it a good rub with my fingers. Now a lot of this is going to be covered again when we add her clothes. But give it a smooth down still anyway. And I'm just going to go a little bit deeper down the centre of her back. Give her a bit more shape. And I'm just going to pad out from her hips to her skirt so that it doesn't go in and then back out. And then I've got some more of the pink that I used for the skirt. I'm going to wrap this around her waist. And it's just going to cover up that white bit. So just give it a little bit of a rub down. In place now I haven't stuck it on with anything it's just kind of stuck itself and then we're going to trim that at the bottom overlap it at the other side and again we'll give it a bit of a trim you can just keep trimming that till you're happy with the shape I've got a little crease at the back so we'll try and fold that back out you can see through slightly to some of the lumps and bumps just underneath but when we've put more creases in and we've added our decoration you shouldn't be able to see that too much and then we want to just gently press in a belly button now the lapel shouldn't have dried, it should stay quite soft for a while so we should still be able to manipulate the body if we need to. And then we're just going to do a little bit of piping around the edges of this piece we've just added. Again, you can spend a bit more time on it. I would have liked to have spent quite a while doing this nice and neatly. Like I say, I was under quite tight time frames for this one, finishing it off just before it needed to go to the event. And I've just got a deeper ruby colour a fondant I'm just going to roll into an oval and put in the middle and again we're just piping around that then I'm going to put some teardrop shapes coming from the bottom upwards also they look like they're just hanging off the bottom of that piece of skirt now onto the head we've got some more of the flesh colour that we used for the body start with a ball I'm going to create a teardrop shape we're going to push in some eye sockets with our fingers or thumbs and I'm just going to roll a little teardrop shape there for the nose just nice and small just give it a rub in place with the back end of the modelling tool. Just pop that up a little bit at the end. Keep smoothing her out till you're happy with the shape. I've just used the bottom end of my modelling tool again, the Dresden tool, to push in a mouth. And then I'm just going to turn it around and use the pointy end to open that mouth up a little bit. I'm going to fill the mouth now with a piece of white for teeth. I'm going to give it a bit of a push down, make sure it stays nicely in place. I've got a bit more pink for the lips. So I've just rolled a small piece with a point at either end and we're going to put that around the bottom of her mouth. I'm going to create the same shape for the top, push it across the top of her mouth and then we're just going to push a little dint in the top for the cupid's bow. And now I've got an oval of the flesh colour that we're just going to cut down and these are going to become our eyelids. So we'll Just check them for size first before we stick them in. Then when you're happy with those, push them down. And because I've used a little ped for this, rather than my normal Renshaw's modelling paste, it means I can't paint onto it with my wet food colours, so we're going to use dusts. So I've just got a brown on here, and I'm just going to put that all on her eyelids. So she looks like she's wearing a little bit of eyeshadow. And then I'm going to use a, a slightly different colour, maybe a bit greeny in the middle. For the eyebrows, I've just got my black modelling paste now, so this is just the normal modelling paste. We want some long sort of slug shapes, and we're just going to push those down in place, make sure they've got a bit of a curve. I'm going to just deepen the eyeshadow a little bit, just on the outside corners. Eyelashes, we want some more of the black. Roll it out, so it's got a nice point at one end. The point's going to go in the centre towards the nose. We're going to put it along the bottom of the eyelid. eyelid. So I'm just trimming the far side of that with the knife. Now at the moment her neck's quite long, so I'm going to trim some of this off, we'll pull that off the stick. Just make sure that the skewer isn't taller than the top of her head. If it is, cut it down. And I'm going to try and push that gap onto the stick. 
So I've cut out a chunk of the lapid from the back of her head. Now it's quite cold in here, so it's starting to firm up quite quickly. It does react to the heat. So when it's warm, when it's been in my hands a while, it goes quite soft, a bit like modeling chocolate does. We'll rest that in place. Just make sure it doesn't look like it's gonna fall off. So I'm gonna put some on the back to keep it in place. And I've got some black here. The black lapid looks a little bit navy blue, but oh, it does when you get it out of the pack. When you get it on in place, you can't tell too much. So I'm just gonna put plenty of that on the back, make sure she stays in place. I'm just gonna check if my piping work from earlier has dried, and then I'm gonna paint over in gold, just like we did with the bottom of the dress. Again, just make sure it's the edible stuff. And now for top, I've just wrapped around a, a thin piece of my fondant that I was using on the skirt, and I'm just gonna trim it off at the back. And we're gonna push it together, and then what I'm gonna do is, once it's on, I'm going to trim around all the edges for the line. So we'll go from the bottom, first of all, a straight edge all the way around. I'll just try and neaten up that back bit a little bit. And a hair is going to cover the back on here as well. I'm going to mark in roughly first with the bottom of my Dresden tool where I want the neckline to go. Then once, once I'm happy with it, I'm going to cut through with the knife. Just neaten it off a little bit if you can. And then for the arms, we've got some more of the flesh colour just sort of rolled out two, two sticks of it. I don't want to keep it in my hands for too long because it will start going soft. I've rolled thin around where the wrist is going to go, flattened out the hand, and then we're going to cut a triangle out, leaving a thumb and fingers. Let's put a little bit of a dint in next to the thumb and at the bottom of where the fingers would be. I'm just going to cut into that now. And then we'll trim the fingers, they're all different lengths. Just look at your own hand for what length each finger should be. And then I'm going to play around with the positioning of the finger, so it looks like it's in a bit of a Bollywood dance move. We're gonna go in a little bit thinner at the elbow and I'm gonna bend it a little bit there. And I'm gonna just push that onto there, like so. If it doesn't stick, you can use a little bit of piping gel to hold it in place. Also, if you find it is drooping, you can always run a piece of spaghetti or a cocktail stick through the arm onto the body, just to give it a bit of extra strength. And keep an eye on it to make sure they're not moving too much. So this one didn't want to stay in place too well, so we're going to add a little bit of a cocktail stick just to help secure it on there, and I'll slot that onto there. So once you've got both the arms on, we can add the sleeves. So we'll do those in the same colour as the top in pink. Pop that around there. We're just going to cut it underneath. Just give it a good smooth out, trying to get rid of any lines with your finger or your modelling tool. Do the same on both arms. Again, just try and rub out that seam the best you can. And then we're going to put a little bit more piping details on. So we're going to put some little dots on. So it looks like she's got some chains and jewellery hanging from her top down onto her belly. I'll pipe a second layer down. Another one just hanging below that. And then we're going to do something similar now for a necklace. And we'll just use a series of dots around her neck. I think my hand's getting in the way a little bit of you seam. Just add more layers of dots to thicken up the necklace. Some even bigger ones around the bottom. Ooh, and the lighting's changed a bit. Just trying to add some swirls, leaf shapes, flower shapes. Go with whatever you find easiest for the patterning on it, really. Mine doesn't look like anything in particular. Just a series of squiggles and things. Now for the hair, we want some more of the black. And I'm going to roll a few individual pieces. They're still reasonably thick. And my first piece, I've just got a little swirl on the end, a little spiral on the end of it. The majority of it's just straight. And I'm going to start by sticking it on the base of the neck. So I don't want too much weight on the head at first. It's going to go on the neck and I'm going to add a second piece just overlapping the first one, sitting on top of that. And then we're going to start adding more of our hair around the back. So at first, again, just pushing it onto the back of the neck rather than the head itself. And I'm adding more of these around the back, filling in all that gap at the back of her head. Then once I've done that, I'll start sticking them a little bit higher up on her head. So can you see I'm doing a second layer that's just coming a little bit higher. And then I've just put a circle, quite a flat circle, on almost like the cap at the back of her head. Because I want her hair to look like it's half up, half down. And then some long teardrop shapes, really quite long and thin. Quite rounded at the top end that's going on her head, with a point at the back end. We'll push that around to the back of the head. We'll add a second one, so it's got a point on both ends. Just push it just underneath that last one. We'll add a third, doing the same thing. And you're just going to repeat the same at the other side of her head. Then we can add some lines now. I'm just using the pointy bit of the Dresden tool. So it's like the back of the point. And I'm just dragging that from the front of her head 
round to the back so that it looks a bit more hair like and then we'll give her a bit of jewelry coming down onto her forehead again we're just going to pipe some shapes on mainly dots and teardrop shapes and then we're going to give her some little bangles so you want lots of thin sausage shapes and we're just going to pop them around each arm now just be really careful that you're not pressing on too hard on the arms as we don't want to snap the arms off or pull them off just put as many of those on as you want don't do them too thick because we don't want them too much weight pulling down on the arm and then once you've done that you can add a little bit of gold so this is the gold that I actually used on the board so this particular one isn't an edible gold but as it's not on the kick itself and it's on the top of part of the body it can be removed rather than having to be eaten and if you want to eat the body just use the edible gold instead I've added more bangles to the other arm as well and then we can give her some earrings again just massive teardrop shapes I've added in here all that can be painted up so all my royal icing now I'm adding a bit of the gold too so the necklace around her neck a little bit of beading around her tummy her little forehead piece of jewellery I'm afraid I don't know what it's called and also the royal icing that's on her outfit as well and then we're going to go back onto a skirt and anywhere that we've not added shading with the claret coloured edible dust we'll go back over and add some more to and mine feels like it's dried up a little bit now so I'm going to remove all those cocktail sticks that I had under the skirt earlier and they're staying in place so there she is all completed so I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and people do tend to ask how long this has taken in total because obviously we cut the video down a little bit so this one took me two full days all together hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching if you liked this video and would like to see more please click on the images of the other videos suggested also please do subscribe to my channel using the button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen you can also visit my cake website and my Facebook page to see more cakes and ideas.